This is what scientists discovered in Chernobyl for us. Let's check it out. April 26, 1986. This day marked one of the most tragic incidents in the history of mankind. After less than a decade of service, Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant's Reactor No. 4 exploded near the city of Pripyat. Nearly four decades later, the Chernobyl disaster still casts a long shadow over its victims and the global community, making people think about the harsh realities of a dystopian world. From a mysterious entity to mutant animals, mm. here are the 20 weirdest things ever found in Chernobyl. Number 20. Blackbird of Chernobyl Here's one of the lesser-known tales surrounding Chernobyl, the Blackbird. If you're familiar with the Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, this story might sound familiar. There are several claims that before the catastrophic event on April 26, 1986, workers at the Chernobyl plant reported seeing a large black humanoid creature with piercing red eyes and massive wings. This horrifying entity seemed to have sealed the fate of the reactor. Just like the Mothman that appeared before the collapse of the Silver Bridge, the Blackbird became a herald of doom. Like the Mothman, the Blackbird of Chernobyl was reported to induce terrifying dreams and unexplained phone calls among those who witnessed it. Following the disaster, workers involved in the cleanup also claimed to have seen this creature hovering over the ruins of the devastated city. The similarities didn't end there. Just like the Mothman, the Blackbird of Chernobyl was never seen again after the meltdown. There are some attempts to explain the Blackbird's existence, with some claiming that it was just a misidentified black stork, an endangered species endemic to southern Eurasia. With the bird being nearly three feet tall and a massive wingspan of almost six feet, it's easy to misremember it as a more intimidating creature. Nothing is confirmed about the Blackbird's existence to this day. Before we go on, like the See, this isn't the first time I've heard people talk or describe seeing something before a catastrophic event. Like, I guess we need to start paying attention. I always look at the animals anyway, because I say when the birds and different things or the animals start leaving, it's a sign that something about to happen. This video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now. Number 19, radiation eating black fungi. Jeez. After the tragedy of Chernobyl, everyone expected for life to vanish around the region. And yet, somehow, nature found its way to introduce new life around the radioactive reactor, life that can easily thrive amidst the lethal environment of the area. On February 24, 2022, Russian troops braved into the Chernobyl exclusion zone in northern Ukraine to do a cleanup. It was then that they discovered a bizarre organism, black fungi that has a bizarre superpower, to thrive in a highly radioactive environment. Now you see, this just might hold the key to significant advancements in radiation protection, particularly in space exploration. Although just recently studied, the first trace of this fungi was discovered as early as the early 1990s. These fungi first caught the attention of researchers for their high concentration of melanin. Uh. This substance, a pigment commonly associated with skin color and hair, plays a crucial role in these fungi survival. It's been found that these fungi, aside from their ability to withstand gamma radiation, can also convert it into chemical energy in a process similar to what plants do in photosynthesis. This unique adaptation has caught the attention of scientists worldwide, leading to innovative research on how these fungi can be utilized beyond the confines of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. For instance, in 2016, SpaceX and NASA sent strains of these black fungi to the International Space Station to study their potential to protect astronauts from cosmic radiation. The study conducted on the ISS showed that a thin layer of this fungus could effectively block a portion of incoming radiation, a promising step towards developing a living radiation shield for deep space exploration. Number 18. The Red Forest It's easy to see how this forest obtained its name. Located right in the middle of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, this forest underwent a dramatic transformation following the catastrophic nuclear accident in 1986. In fact, this forest received a dangerous amount of radiation, and its pine trees perished and turned into a bizarre ginger color. Aside from the crimson color of the pine trees, scientists also noticed that the radiation had a bizarre effect on the decomposition in the forest. Studies have shown that plant matter in the red forest, including leaf litter and tree trunks, decays much slower than in uncontaminated forests. This is due to the inhibited activity of microbes and fungi which are essential for breaking down organic matter. 
Because of its crimson hue and otherworldly appearance, the Red Forest has inspired countless games and novels that explore post-apocalyptic themes. Scientists believe that the pine trees will retain this hue for years to come. Wow. Number 17. <laughs> the Babushkas of Chernobyl. In Poland and Russia, the word babushka refers to elderly women or grandmothers. As such, the babushkas of Chernobyl are just that, elderly women who refuse to abandon and leave their homes despite the ecological disaster that occurred in the area. Despite the dangers posed by the high levels of radiation, around 100 of these women moved back into the zone, mm. driven by a deep connection to their land and homes, places where generations of their families had lived. Natural but why? You know what I mean? I, I get it. That's the only place you've ever known. It's home. I get that part. But the dangers of it, like why? That makes me think about people that when tornadoes or hurricanes and stuff like that, they just board up the house and stay in there and try to weather the storm. And if if you make it out alive, then cool, good. But if you don't, then your family is left devastated. And they're questioning what made you make that decision. So I never really truly understand that. Naturally, authorities initially forbade their return. The babushkas persevered, however, and the authorities eventually gave in and allowed them to return to their homes, with the expectation that they would not live long in such hazardous conditions. And yet, these elderly women remained. Many of them were interviewed in the early 2010s, and during that time, the majority of them were already in their 70s and 80s. How they managed to stay alive and unaffected by the radiation remains unknown. Perhaps they were affected but they endured the pain to remain within their homeland. The babushkas refused to yield to an invisible enemy. They claimed that starvation is what ends lives, and not radioactivity. These women were already at the end of their lives over eight years ago. Once they're gone, no one will call Chernobyl home anymore. This might stay true for years to come. Until then, the babushkas of Chernobyl will be honored and remembered. It now, might be the radiation that's keeping them alive, who knows? I know they need to be studied if, if they they should ask to be get permission from them to study them to see what was keeping them ticking like that or if the the radiation was assisting or not number 16 altered genes and dogs hmm. now the babushkas aren't the only ones who remained in chernobyl after the disaster dozens of dogs remained after the nuclear reactor meltdown of course the poor animals didn't know any better Right. After the Chernobyl nuclear plant exploded in 1986, the surrounding human population was evacuated, and the pets left behind were supposed to be culled to prevent the spread of radioactive contamination. However, some of them escaped and roamed around Chernobyl. With the help of cleanup workers, these stray dogs survived, resulting in over 800 of their descendants now living in the defunct nuclear plant. It's a question of how they survived in the first place. Right. But scientists also discovered something intriguing about these dogs. The first genetic analysis of these dogs revealed that they're genetically distinct from other dog populations. They might look ordinary, but somehow their genetic makeup changed. Yet, it's not clear whether this genetic distinction is due to radiation, the dog's ability to survive in a radioactive environment, or a result of 37 years of relative isolation leading to inbreeding. Most of these dogs are genetically related to German Shepherds, but aside from that, much about them remains unknown. All we know is that these German Shepherd-descended dogs are experiencing rapid evolution, and visitors are cautioned to avoid interacting with these dogs for safety and to minimize radiation exposure. Number 15. Deformed Farm Animals Dogs and wildlife weren't the only creatures oh. affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Farm animals were also affected. In the years following the 1986 catastrophe, a significant number of deformed farm animals were born in the area. In 1990 alone, about 400 deformed animals were reported, showcasing a range of abnormalities, including malformations of the head and the presence of extra limbs. These deformities also affected the size and color of the animals. With the radiation damaging DNA, the blueprint for all the cells in our body, errors are bound to happen. These mutations could occur in various forms, affecting different aspects of physical development. For example, mutations could lead to abnormal growth, resulting in deformed limbs or other body parts. If the radiation affected the DNA in reproductive cells, these mutations could be passed on to the offspring, leading to congenital deformities. Unfortunately, 
farm animals weren't the only ones affected by these deformities. The exclusion zone serves as a peculiar sanctuary for wildlife affected by radiation. Animals within the zone, such as horses, wolves, and various birds, have adapted to the radioactive environment, though they may suffer from reduced reproductive rates and produce mutated offspring. Surprisingly, some animal populations have thrived despite the radiation. However, not all creatures fare well in this environment. Invertebrates like bees and butterflies have declined, likely due to laying eggs in radioactive soil. Aquatic life in lakes within the zone, including frogs and fish, also face genetic instability from radionuclides settling in the sediment. Despite the challenges, scientists closely monitor the wildlife for more changes. Number 14. A massive sarcophagus. Did you know that there's a sarcophagus in Chernobyl? And it's not the one you think it is. This sarcophagus isn't like the ones in Egypt intended to house the dead. This sarcophagus was meant to contain radioactivity. You see, one of the most challenging tasks of the Chernobyl disaster was to contain the radioactive material within the damaged reactor 4. This led to the construction of the sarcophagus. That's one of my biggest worries about this place. How can we continue to keep it contained? as well as the animals that are in there that have now, you know what I mean, just absorbed all that radiation. How do we continue to keep them contained and make sure they don't get out and start spreading different things? Formerly known as the Mammoth Beam, this structure, built from May to November 1986, is among the most massive movable objects ever made by humans. Its construction within such a short time frame is remarkable. Constructed under extraordinarily dangerous conditions with high radiation levels, the workers faced a race against time. The sarcophagus, made from over 400,000 cubic meters of concrete and 7,300 tons of metal framework, was an emergency measure to confine the radioactive materials. Although done in haste, this structure is incredibly complex, with over 60 boreholes for observation and incorporated ventilation shafts. However, the sarcophagus was never intended as a permanent solution. Its deterioration over time increased the risk of radioactive leaks. In 1988, it was projected that the sarcophagus would need restorative work within 20 to 30 years. True to these predictions, water leaking through its roof and becoming radioactively contaminated posed a serious threat. And so, in 2016, the original sarcophagus was dismantled. The area underwent a cleanup, and the new safe confinement was implemented. The project encountered several challenges, from funding problems to delays. Even so, the project pushed through, allowing us to reduce the radioactivity in Chernobyl once more. Number 13. Hundreds of Gas Masks One of the most popular locations in Pripyat is Middle School Number 3. You might have seen it on the internet without knowing what it actually is. In this abandoned room are gas masks scattered and strewn across the floors. Seeing this while knowing Chernobyl's history is truly sobering. However, these masks weren't intended to be used during the nuclear disaster. These masks were initially stored in the school during the Cold War era. They were meant to protect children against nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks. They're predominantly child-sized, a chilling reminder of the young lives that once filled the school's corridors. However, looters, in search of the tiny amounts of silver within the gas mask filters, have displaced these relics from their storage, creating this scene that seems straight out of a horror movie. The school itself, once bustling with activity and filled with the sounds of children's voices, now stands as a silent witness to the disaster. Number 12. The Stalkers of Chernobyl Now, most of us have our own list of places we want to go to. Perhaps some of you want to visit Japan, New Zealand, Australia, and other popular countries mm -hmm. with famous sites and attractions. At least, this is where the majority of us would like to go. A small percentage among us have a penchant for the abandoned and the obscure, namely, dark tourists. Dark tourism refers to travel to places associated with death, suffering, and the macabre. This type of tourism often involves visiting historical sites that have witnessed tragic events, such as battlefields, disaster zones, and locations of notorious crimes. This is where the stalkers of Chernobyl come from. Despite radioactivity in the area, Several people who call themselves stalkers roam around Chernobyl. This phenomena, termed stalkerism, straddles the line between transgressive adventure and cultural exploration. Unfortunately, these stalkers often walk the fine line between legal and illegal activity. Like, listen, I like living on the edge. I like that. 
I like that as just as much as the next person. You know, I like a thrill. Love a thrill. But this here just don't make no sense. What are y'all doing? What do y'all hope to accomplish here, bro? Like, no. Now, you're probably wondering why people would want to visit a potentially harmful area, right. right? The reasons can be something as simple as interest and curiosity. However, the majority of people who are into dark tourism have a morbid fascination, a desire to be educated, an immersion. Would any of you be interested in visiting Chernobyl if given no. the chance? I'd definitely give it a try. There's something quite fascinating in the macabre. However, I'll keep in mind that I should respect these places. If there's one thing dark tourists usually follow, it's respect for the places they visit. After all, sites of historical importance and tragedies require respect. Number 11. I wouldn't even chance it with a mask on the entire time. Just for the simple fact that, I don't know, your mask could somehow not get a good seal and it leak and you breathe something in. No, I'm not taking that chance. Color changing frogs. As tiny as they are, one of the things that captivated researchers in Chernobyl is the frogs in the area, particularly eastern tree frogs. This species is usually known for its bright green coloration, but this isn't true in Chernobyl. Since the catastrophic nuclear meltdown in 1986, these frogs have been adapting to their radiation-laden environment in a remarkable way by changing color. It sounds insignificant, but this animal's simple evolution of changing color is quite significant. Around 2016, Researchers began noticing that frogs in the area were not just slightly darker, but some were also pitch black, a stark contrast to their original vibrant green hue. Remember the black radiation-eating fungi I told you about earlier? The same thing applies to these creatures. These frogs gain melanin, the same pigment that determines human skin color. In these frogs, higher levels of melanin are not just about a darker hue. They offer protection against the harmful effects of radiation. Melanin has this incredible ability to absorb and dissipate radiation energy, thus reducing the likelihood of cell damage. This so what does my melanin protect me against? Huh? Somebody, somebody please tell me that. This essentially means that frogs with more melanin, resulting in darker skin, were better equipped to survive in the radiation-rich environment of Chernobyl. The dark coloration of these frogs, interestingly, correlates with the historic radiation levels in the area they inhabit rather than the current radiation levels. This indicates that the frogs with darker coloration at the time of the Chernobyl accident, who were initially in the minority, had a survival advantage due to the protective action of melanin. For more than 10 generations since the accident, this has led to natural selection favoring these darker frogs. As a result, they've become the dominant type within the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Number 10. Atomic Vodka After the catastrophic event in 1986, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone was established. This is the area that was hit the hardest by the disaster. Scientists have estimated this area will remain unsafe for a staggering 24,000 years. However, within this seemingly desolate space, a group of scientists led by Jim Smith, an environmental scientist at the University of Portsmouth, decided on a unique project. They planned to create something out of raw materials obtained around Chernobyl. Their idea? to obtain water and cereal around Chernobyl and turn it into vodka, called Atomic. This drink is the first and probably the only consumer product to have come out of the Chernobyl exclusion zone since the nuclear disaster. Oh. Their research focused on an experimental farming plot near the Opachichi settlement, within the less contaminated parts of the exclusion zone. They cultivated rye on this plot, which did show some radioactivity, but simply distilling the rye into the vodka removed the radioactivity. The distillation process left many heavier elements in the waste, resulting in a spirit where the only detectable radioactivity was natural carbon-14, similar to what you would find in any spirit. Simply put, the distillation process made it safe to drink. The atomic vodka was further diluted using mineral water from a deep aquifer in Chernobyl, located about six miles south of the reactor. Despite the location where it was found, the water seemed to be free from Chernobyl-related radioactivity. Seemed. There are still some doubts regarding its safety, even though scientists... Pre seemed. Listen to the word. It seemed to be free of the radiation. Hmm. Now, this sounds like something that you'll hear about down the line, 10, 12, 20 years down the line, and then you realize, oh, that water wasn't free. ...created it. Quite understandable. I wouldn't consume anything that's potentially radioactive either. Would you dare to try this? No. I probably won't. However, the economic revival of Chernobyl can possibly be ignited by this product. 
Number 9. The Firefighters of Chernobyl uh. On the night of the tragedy, the firefighters of Chernobyl were the first to respond to the scene. Vladimir Pravik, a Soviet firefighter, and his 14-man ship swiftly mobilized to the site. Pravik's team initially struggled to identify the fire's source due to the extensive damage and multiple fires. Eventually, they focused on the turbine hull's roof, considering it the most immediate threat due to its contents of flammable materials. But of course, the flames should have been the least of their worries. The exposure to extreme levels of radioactivity soon began to take its toll, leading to early symptoms of acute radiation syndrome, which may range from fever, nausea, loss of consciousness, and seizures. Despite the grave danger, Pravik and his men persisted in their efforts until they were physically unable to continue. Following the exposure, Pravik was hospitalized, where he endured severe symptoms of ARS. His condition deteriorated rapidly, demonstrating the harsh reality of radiation's impact on the human body. There are rumors that Pravik received a lot of radiation, lethal doses to the point that his eyes turned from dark brown to blue. Unfortunately, Pravik is just one of the many people who suffered from the disaster. Many of the people who fled from Chernobyl suffered from the effects of radioactivity until the end of their lives. Number 8. The Toxic Elephant's Foot The elephant's foot isn't what you think it is. Located in a basement beneath reactor number 4, the elephant's foot is composed mainly of silicon dioxide, with traces of uranium, titanium, zirconium, magnesium, and graphite. The mass was so radioactive and dense that armor-piercing bullets had to be used to chip off samples for analysis. Jeez. Initially, the radioactivity near the elephant's foot was extremely high, delivering a lethal radiation dose within minutes. You see, this mass of corium was formed during the nuclear disaster. It's pretty obvious how it earned its name, as it resembles the foot of the massive mammal. This lava-like fuel-containing material weighs about 2.2 tons, or 2 metric tons. Despite being dangerous, there's often fascination surrounding this material. You see, corium has only formed naturally five times in history. The first was in 1979 during the Three Mile Island accident in Pennsylvania, one in 1986 in Chernobyl, and three times in 2011 at the Fukushima Daiichi plant disaster in Japan. Although this mass has already hardened, the elephant's foot remains extremely dangerous. It will remain lethal and hazardous for decades and even centuries to come. In fact, it's more dangerous because it's something unknown. You see, we still have no idea how corium will behave in the long run. This new confinement system placed over Chernobyl should hopefully contain its harmful effects, and we can only hope that another incident that might result in corium won't happen again. Scientists are already researching how to properly mitigate quenching and cooling corium, but let's hope we won't put this knowledge to use anytime soon. Number 7. Dolls of Chernobyl Among the ruins of Chernobyl are dolls. These figures, mostly destroyed and broken, lay scattered across the town, many in the local kindergarten. These dolls, which might initially appear to be remnants left behind in the hasty evacuation, have become a subject of intrigue and debate. The Chernobyl disaster changed everything in Pripyat, a city that was thought to be the future of the Soviet Union. The explosion at the nuclear power plant led to an emergency evacuation exposing residents to significant levels of radiation. Despite the initial measures, the average whole-body dose to the evacuees was estimated at around 2 rem, potentially increasing the lifetime risk of cancer for those affected. To this day, this lethal level of radioactivity remains. Contrary to popular belief, these dolls weren't left behind by children who fled on the day of the disaster. Instead, most of them are placed by people who visit the exclusion zone despite the radioactivity present in the area. Many of these dolls were put in Chernobyl as an attraction, while some were as a tribute for those who lost their homes and also for children who abruptly lost their homes and subsequently their childhoods because of the tragedy. This I see why they did it though. Because every time my mind, uh, I look at, my eyes look at one of the dolls, I imagine maybe a family getting alerted of this explosion and different things going on and running out of the house, leaving a doll behind. Like my mind imagines a whole like scenario playing out every time I look at one of those. This act, however, has led to some controversy as it blurs the line between the authentic historical narrative of the tragedy and the constructed narratives by visitors. As tourism in the area has increased, so has the interaction with these objects, leading to concerns about the preservation of the site 
and the respect owed to its tragic history. What's your take on this? Do you think the dolls brought by visitors should be removed? Let me know about what you think in the comments down below. Number 6. The Abandoned Carnival This abandoned carnival is among the most iconic places in Pripyat. Planned to open for the May Day celebrations on May 1, 1986, this park became an unintended symbol of the catastrophic nuclear accident on April 26, just days before its grand opening. Today, nothing else is left of it except the rusting Ferris wheel and the decaying bumper cars that were never used. Mm. Before the disaster, Pripyat was a modern, thriving city that showcased the Soviet Union's atomic age futurism. It was home to about 50,000 nuclear power plants. If the disaster didn't happen, this amusement park would have been enjoyed by tens of thousands of residents. The Chernobyl disaster struck early on that fateful day, releasing unprecedented amounts of radiation into the environment. Despite the severity of the situation, the initial response was marked by confusion and delayed action. Communications were cut off, and there was a hesitance to spread news of the accident. This amusement park was allegedly briefly opened on April 27 to distract residents from the disaster. If this is true, it'd be the only time this amusement park was used. It seems that this amusement park was built to be abandoned and forgotten. Number 5. Silhouettes sense. of Missing People One of the things that dark tourists did in Chernobyl was to leave eerie artworks. Shadow graffiti. The city is uninhabited, but if you look around, you'll find what many refer to as shadows of missing people. These are silhouettes of people painted in black along the desolate buildings of Chernobyl. Finding these artworks is like a game. Some are incredibly small and hard. I get what they were trying to do, but I don't like it. I don't like it. Fine. These silhouettes are usually portrayed stuck, almost as if they're shadows of real people frozen right. in time. A shadow of a child about to press a light switch. A shadow of an infant playing hide and seek. Children playing with each other. A lone child crying. It's almost as if these shadows are the only inhabitants of the desolate and radioactive area. Number 4. Hospital of Death From an abandoned middle school, another horrifying location in Chernobyl is the hospital in Pripyat known as MC4-126. Located on Druzhby Narodov Street, it was initially built to serve the residents of Pripyat, including the workers of the nuclear power plant and their families. On the morning mm. of April 26, 1986, the hospital began receiving casualties even before any official announcement of the accident had been made. If the walls of this hospital could only talk, it would probably speak about the horrors it witnessed amidst the evacuation. In this place, you can still see clothes that were too contaminated to be moved. After its patients were flown to Moscow to treat their radiation injuries, most of the hospital was left behind and forgotten. Today, many of the rooms in this hospital have been vandalized by dark tourists. Even so, it remains among the most chilling and horrifying sights in Pripyat, a dark reminder of what residents experienced hours after the nuclear meltdown. Number 3. Abandoned Cooling Tower One of the most popular locations in Chernobyl is the abandoned cooling towers. Approaching these towers is a journey across a vast expanse of concrete littered with obstacles and construction relics. The Did anybody else see the dude with the mask on, with the Stranger Things mask on? In Chernobyl or whatever it might not have been Stranger Things what was that movie I can't remember now is the abandoned cooling towers approaching these towers is a journey across a vast expanse of concrete littered with obstacles and construction so relics the acoustics inside the larger tower create an almost surreal experience echoing the smallest of sounds on the floor the remnants of the cooling apparatus and building materials never to be used lie scattered these towers, now silent and unused, are nothing but the subject of those who are into dark tourism and the stalkers who explore what remains of Chernobyl. Number 2. Giant Catfish Of everything that might thrive in Chernobyl, the least you'd expect is a marine creature, right? But alas, despite all odds, catfish have thrived in Chernobyl. Wells Catfish, also known as Silurus glanus, can be found in Chernobyl's cooling pond. One of the places you'd least expect life to thrive. Dang. These creatures have reached massive sizes, but unlike other anomalies and other irregularities in Chernobyl, it's not caused by radioactivity. The Chernobyl cooling pond is devoid of predators, but abundant in prey. For this reason, the catfish here can truly thrive. In fact, 
The largest catfish caught for scientific purposes in these ponds measured almost six feet long, roughly the height of an average person. These measurements, wow. while impressive, are within the natural growth potential of the species. Known to be one of the largest freshwater fish in Ukraine and Europe, potentially living up to a hundred years and growing up to 16 feet in length. Wait. All that good old catfish and I can't even eat it, bro. God, I love catfish. In around 220 pounds. Despite the high radiation levels in the area following the Chernobyl disaster, the catfish have adapted to the conditions and are thriving. Contrary to initial expectations that the polluted waters would become a no breeding zone for aquatic life, these creatures make experts wonder what other life would be discovered in Chernobyl. Again, life finds a way. And now it's time for today's topic. This story shocked the world. This is what scientists discovered in the Chernobyl forest. Although often exaggerated in popular media, radioactivity can significantly affect wildlife. Perhaps this creature is the result of that. Scientists in Chernobyl claim that there's still significant radioactivity in the area. That's why several dark tourists were surprised upon seeing this bizarre creature near Chernobyl. It looked like the Komodo dragon in Indonesia, but much smaller in size. To this day, it's unknown as to what the creature is. Aside from a single photo, it was never seen again much to the disappointment of cryptozoologists. Could this be another hoax? Or could this be another could instance be. of a cryptid becoming a real creature? Number 1. Graveyard of Vehicles Man. Alongside the abandoned dogs and homes in Chernobyl are countless vehicles, gradually succumbing to nature. Deep within the radioactive area is a graveyard filled with vehicles left behind by their owners after the catastrophe. Radioactivity might not immediately end someone's life, but how it affects a person in the long run is enough of a reason to flee any contaminated area immediately. Although later than intended, evacuation immediately commenced 36 hours after the meltdown. Among the things left behind were buses, cars, helicopters, and trucks. Most of these were left behind near the village of Rozoka. Collectively, these vehicles are valued at over $48 million. However, many of these vehicles have since been dismantled for scrap with only a few remnants of their former presence lingering on the site. Another graveyard vehicle is in Pripyat, housing armored vehicles and trucks. These trucks, equipped with massive tanks holding about 30,000 liters of decontamination solution, were used to wash down the city's streets, buildings, and trees to control the spread of radioactive dust. Today, these vehicles serve no purpose, and all we can do is wait for them to be reclaimed by nature. 